let's have a sense of the balance sheet. So we will know from the accounting equation that assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. And this is the format that the balance sheet will take. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Um, it could also be represented as assets minus liabilities equals owner's equity. That way we know what our owner's equity is represented by. It's represented by our net assets being assets minus our liabilities. Now, a few significant things we should think about assets. Assets are divided up into two categories. So we have current assets and we have non current assets. What is a current asset? A current asset is something that's likely to turn into cash in the current year, within the next year. And clearly a non-current asset is those assets that don't. So you'd see examples of current assets as cash, you've already got it, it's already in cash. Um, your accounts receivable, because you hope they're going to be paid pretty soon. Your stock you have on hand, your inventory, because you intend to sell that, not hold on to it. So they're examples of current assets. Non-current assets would be like equipment you buy, um, your motor vehicles. Let's look at liabilities. How are they divided up? Liabilities are divided up between current liabilities and, I guess you've guessed it, non-current liabilities. So, you know, there was a time these were referred to as current liabilities and long-term liabilities. And they're also referred to as current assets and fixed assets. So we'll look at assets divided up between current and non-current, liabilities divided up between current and non-current. Owner's equity is not divided up. It's owner's equity is the owner's equity. So let's have a look at some of these items in a bit more detail and how we may represent them in the balance sheet. So balance sheet, an important aspect about a balance sheet is it is for a period ended. So, so it's not for a period ended, it is as at, as at a certain date. It gives a snapshot of the business. So as at the 30th of June 2012, here's, this is what we have. So we have, firstly, current assets, and we might have current assets would be a good current asset, cash at bank. Now these would um, tend to be written in the order of liquidity. What they are really written in is the order of the chart of accounts which should be written in the order of liquidity. So you'll have cash at bank. You could have investments. You could have receivables. So let's look at some different types of receivables. You might have a note receivable. And you might have an account receivable. Now I'm going to leave a few spaces underneath accounts receivable because I want to come back and uh, talk about that just a little bit more. So accounts receivable, we could also have such things as, well clearly we're going to have um, our stock we talked about, inventory. We could have um, supplies that we've got in the cupboard and we can have prepayments. That's a pretty good start, you know, prepayments such as prepaid rent, prepaid insurance prepaid salaries if we happen to have that. So there's our current assets. Now I might put um, some numbers on here. So we'll say we've got $1,000 cash at bank. Um, we won't have any investments for the moment. We've got a note receivable for $50. Accounts receivable I'll just leave for a moment. Um, $200 worth of inventory, supplies of 20, prepayments of 30. Now, why have I left a space for accounts receivable? Well, I guess some of you have guessed already that this deals with contra accounts because our accounts receivable, we may not collect all of that, especially because of the matching principle and also the doctrine of conservatism. We need to have made some allowance for that, which we would have. So we have an allowance for bad debts. So 
So, we may have account receivable or accounts receivable, $105 less, allowance for bad debts, $5. So, our net accounts receivable will be $100 net accounts receivable. $100. So we go allowance for bad debts, we should put in here less or minus or something along those lines. Now here we've got two columns and those two columns are not debits and credits. What are these two columns? Well here's the main total but here's um, items that would lead into that. So it's a bit like subtotal amounts. So we come down here, so we've got a subtotal net accounts receivable is made up of the 105 less the 5. So now we can see total current assets equals $1,400. Now let's look at non-current assets. We get non current assets now we create a bit more space here non-current assets what uh, non-current assets are we going to have so remember non-current assets are things that you um, have for the, for the long term so what's the long term in this more than a year so some examples of that could be equipment I'm going to come back and talk about a few of these. You might have furniture and fittings. You might have motor vehicle. You might have land and buildings. Actually, once land and buildings were put together, now they probably tend to be divided up a bit. So you might have buildings, or even buildings and land. And as well as that, there you could also have what's referred to as intang intangible assets. So intangible assets something you can't really touch. What's an example of an intangible asset? Goodwill is an example of an intangible asset and patents. So I said I'd come back and talk a bit further about some of these and what are some of those I want to come back and talk a bit further about well here they are let's put some spaces in and I guess you're thinking about contra accounts again and we're working out what spaces we're going to put in here and why should have done this before oh, okay. So I didn't do it before. Insert rows. Now we could have um, other items in here we can get into. Um, well, let's, let's stay to the simple stuff. So equipment, an important thing is um, in accounting, there is the cost principle. So we'll have equipment at cost. less accumulated depreciation of equipment and this equals the carrying amount or often also referred to as the WDV the written down value now maybe just so this stands out a bit we'll indent it in here So we'll copy this down because for each of these items, furniture and fittings, we can have less accumulated depreciation equals carrying amount, motor vehicles, less accumulated depreciation, and also we could depreciate a building. Pity I spelt amount wrong. Bang. Right, so let's have a look at how this may work and be presented. So, the um, equipment at cost 
$1,000, less accumulated depreciation, $200, equals the carrying amount of $800. So accumulated depreciation is just deducted from the cost, and so we can see that's the carrying amount. If you'd like to know a bit more about depreciation, see the video um, on depreciation. Let's say furniture and fittings, we have $200 for furniture and fittings. We've had them for some time, and so they've got um, the accumulated depreciation of $100, so they have a carrying amount of $100. Motor vehicle, well, let's not, let's say we don't own any motor vehicle, or we don't own any land, or we don't own any buildings, um, but let's put in some land. $1,000 and we say we've got no patents, no goodwill put in here. So what's our non-current asset? So equals sum of all of those items and actually will we have some goodwill? Well, let's put in, that's a bit easy to change for us, let's say we do have some goodwill um, I might go into this now but it, with goodwill, we also do need to show potential impairment of goodwill, which is a bit like um, depreciation expense. So I won't put that in, but I'll just alert you to it. And patents, we might have patents that are worth $100. So this gives us our current assets plus our non-current assets equals our total assets. So we know here, and it would be conceivable you know, in just pure presentation terms for um, total current assets and total non-current assets to be put in the next column over again. And we just add that up. So I should really put in here another space. Now I've got total current assets here, I should put total non-current assets. So this is giving us total <coughs> assets of $3,800. As we can see, made up of our current assets and also our non-current assets. So next we need to move on to um, <coughs> total liabilities. Or, you know, there's different choices here, but we'll go total liabilities and owner's equity. Now, why am I doing this? To be faithful to the accounting equation, because assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So we've got total assets here, now we, we need to come down to the balance sheet needs to balance. So again, how is it going to be laid out? We have um, current liabilities. Now what's examples of current liabilities? Might be a bank overdraft. Hold on, I need to move this a bit higher. I'm dropping off the bottom. Bank overdraft. Uh, you might have bills of exchange. For example, a note payable, um, might have accounts payable, and remember these are most probably, and they should go in the order of the chart of accounts. And we could have other payables such as interest payable. So there's an example of liabilities, of current liabilities. So you see a lot of them are, are, are called payables, the thing we've got to do with payables, bank overdraft, Bills of exchange, actually let's call that notes payable. And interest payable to give us a total current liabilities. So overdraft, given we're at Passive Bank, we probably won't have an overdraft. Um, notes payable, I won't put any notes payable in. Well, we're pretty likely to have some accounts payable. So we've got to make that a bit higher to 80 and 
20 so the things might have some chance of working out easily um, total current liabilities well equal three hundred dollars or three hundred thousand or three hundred million or whatever it is you would like and then we'll have non-current liabilities so what are non-current liabilities uh, they are things that you owe but you're not likely to have to pay um, within the current period so a bank loan may be an example though if you have a bank loan some of it probably is payable in the current period so in that case you might if you had a bank loan you owed a thousand dollars 200 of it was paid in the current was due in the current period well you'd have bank loan 200 in the current liabilities and bank loan 800 in the non-current liabilities but this time I just say we've got a bank loan of uh, $500 um, I won't put any other non-current liabilities in so our total current liabilities is 800 is 300 our um, total non-current liabilities liabilities is disappeared is 500 so our total liabilities is 800 So immediately we should be able to tell what our equity is. Now we won't just work our equity out um, by knowing that it's $3,000. We would go to um, the statement of changes in owner's equity and it would say $3,000. So now we've got um, equity would be the capital account and we could have a lot of different capital accounts here of people capital account three thousand dollars and therefore total equity in this case is three thousand dollars and we have therefore total liabilities and owner's equity equals $3,800 and our balance sheet balances if our balance sheet doesn't balance we are in a bit of trouble we just need to go back and check it well it's a rather simple balance sheet but it's an overview give you uh, an opportunity to have some basic standing of the balance sheet so as a quick review the balance sheet um, is based on the accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus owners equity. But the assets are divided up between current assets and non-current assets, and liabilities are divided up between current liabilities and non-current liabilities. A balance sheet is produced at a particular point in time. So in its heading it's got as at because this is what it is as at this particular time. 19 minutes, that's long enough. Bye.